as an online business owner, I have been resisting TikTok because I haven't wanted to add yet another social media platform, but I am slowly coming around to the power of the platform. And in an effort to educate myself, I wanted to bring on a guest expert who has cracked the code in how to get your brand out in the world using TikTok. Welcome to the Brand Gravity Show. My name is Kate Putnam. I'm the psychology-driven brand strategist and your host. My guest today is Mike Draper. He has built a massive audience on TikTok and furthermore, has been doing the testing and experimentation to figure out what actually works. And I cannot wait to share all of his insight with you today. TikTok and the whole marketing visibility aspect of brand building comes in the D part of my clarity code process. So C is all about knowing who you are, figuring out the core of your brand. O is determining your offer and aligning it with what the market wants. D is about building demand for that offer. And that's where this part of the equation comes in. E is all about your energy as an entrepreneur, as the visionary of your business. All of it is important. And I can't wait to really tease into this specific aspect or specific strategy of building demand for your brand. Mike Draper is a former SWAT police officer and Air Force vet turned viral content creator. And he's quickly gaining the world's attention and taking the online business world by storm. From corporations and the C-suite to entrepreneurs and independents, Mike's brilliant MBA mind is taking true social strategy to the masses and helping everyone go viral. With a background in real estate and mortgages, numbers are Mike's forte. Mixing that with his research, study of the social craft, and trial and error of building a social channel for singles and dating life with hilarious, wholesome dad content. As a dad to amazing Ellie, who's currently age seven, he's built over a 700,000 organic follower audience and has cracked the code on how to make content in any industry go viral. It's not luck, it's strategy, and Mike can prove it. Let's get to the conversation. For those who haven't heard your story yet, how does one go from a SWAT police officer and a veteran to going viral on TikTok? <laughs> you just kind of wing it. Now, uh, there's got to be a reason, right? There's got to be something kind of pulling you forward or pushing you from behind, right? It's yeah. That's for anything in life, I feel like. But the stark contrast between you know, police, military stuff to... TikTok, <laughs> it was out of necessity. So doing police work, I was in a graduate degree program. And for, you know, for the two years in that program, people are asking you, you know, hey, what's next? What are you going to do after this? What job are you going to do? And so I ended up falling on mortgages in like the real estate industry because I had experience with personal investing and my undergraduate degree was in finance and my master's was in business. And so I just, you know, numbers were easy, investing, financing, all that stuff. And so I leaped and went into a fully 100% sales commission-based position. And rule number one is you got to let everybody know what you do. So I was like, okay, I go through my whole phone contacts list. I, I talk you know, anyone I know in person, the gym, the whatever, anywhere, everyone. I made it part of my kind of small talk spiel, you know, and like, oh, I'm just a real estate guy. I just do mortgages. What's, what's going on? Like just kind of opening the door for people. And then I somehow came across, his name is That Mortgage Guy on TikTok, Scott Betley. And uh, I thought even the name was brilliant. I was like, ah, even if you forget the guy's name, like you're just thinking, <laughs> what's that? That Mortgage Guy. And I was like, ah, it's brilliant marketing. And so I started watching some of his content and I was like, I can, I can do this. Like, I mean, yeah, some of these look kind of hard, but like I could figure this out and I'm seeing how many views he's getting and I'm like, God, it's so smart. And that was really like the, the trigger to be like, okay, just figure it out. And then started TikTok, then Instagram reels like the same time and then the rest is history. But I just kept, I just kept, I was just so focused on that task of letting anybody and everybody know what I do. And that was, that mm. was the reason. And on your TikTok, you actually talk about life in general, right? So you're talking about being a single dad, about like dating, that are divorce, funny, dating, yeah, <laughs> all of that stuff. How did you decide to do that as opposed to being strictly mortgages, strictly business? 
So my, my account name was Mortgage Mike for up until like two months ago or something. And so, you know, a year and a half of Mortgage Mike. And the first, my first goal um, when I started doing videos to stay on track and stay focused and disciplined was 100 videos in 100 days, just one a day from z- video zero to z- video 100. And so about 80% or so of those were all mortgage, finance, real estate yeah. related, kind of the similar similar humor, just different punchline, right? Kind of the same. It's still me, but like just different punchlines and uh, as opposed to today's jokes and stuff. And so I started just wanting to figure out how the app works, how the algorithm works. Like, why does this video get 200 views, but that one got 10,000? Like, I don't understand. They look the same to me, right? And so I was like, there's something I'm missing. So then I just started making videos off of like, whatever kind of creatively came to mind, usually it was associated with like the trend that was going on. And so it's like, most of the trends are set up in a very structural way where it's like, you know, person A is talking to person B, person A says something negative, person B says something positive, and then something funny happens here where it's like, there's a structure to it. Okay, how does that apply to my life? Like, where is there a time in my life where someone says something rude to me, but then I have a comeback or whatever the trend is, right? And so I started dabbling in other niches and that's when a couple of reality shows started reaching out when I had a, f- you know, a few of those out of niche videos go pretty viral. And so I was like, hey, that's, that's interesting. Like what, what else can this app do? Right. And so then my focus kind of shifted from like, let everyone know that I'm, that I'm in mortgages to how does the algorithm work to get more views? The idea was to like do it for mortgages, but I, I, the priority was to figure out how do you get views why and how does the app work the way it does? And, you know, how, you know, how do I use this tool? And so I kind of just started following the views in a sense. That's how it's, that's how it kind of started. But yeah. I love that. And I can't wait to dig into your findings from all of those experiments. And I want to highlight something that you said. I think it's important to get in the habit of creating, of being a voice before you even worry about it being strategic or before you worry about it being perfect for your business or for your brand or whatever you think that your goal is, because so much of the results come from that consistency and that discipline that you mentioned that is hard to cultivate if you're putting too much restriction on what you can create or what you should be creating. So I love that you did that and gave yourself Mm -hmm. some creative freedom to get people even more excited about this. So you have all of these followers now over 550,000, I think on TikTok, which Mm -hmm. is bananas. What results have come from all of that visibility? Well, I'm on this podcast. There's one. So what's come from the results? I figured out how to go viral on TikTok. That's kind of cool, right? Not every single time because that's the way that works. But like, if you're consistent in a way, anyone can go viral. So I've I've learned that. That's pretty cool. I've got to do some brand deals, some sponsorships. So I've worked with like Hulu, Pair Eyewear, Bic Lighters, Movember for like men's testicular cancer awareness month. There's a few others. That's kind of cool to like, okay, like I get paid to make a video and they appreciate my creativity. Some give some pretty strict guidelines, which I understand, but it makes it difficult sometimes, but Mm. it's part of the game. It's part of the fun. So that's come from it. There are times where I'm much more present with my daughter because of TikTok. So like I get to be with her more intentionally because of it for many reasons. So I I do love that part of it. And then I've met some really great business partners. I have a new business that uh, is we're in the middle of kicking off right now. It's more of a corporate business to business one, but there's also like a a, a B2C part of it. Uh, She's just a whole nother level of human. And so that's, and someone sent her one of my TikToks, even though they weren't business related. And that's how we met. (laughs) So like, that's pretty cool. You'll see that unfold here in the next couple months. Yeah, those are the things that come from it. It's Mon- super cool. Mo- money, relationships, and experiences. Yeah, nothing good. Nothing that people want. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Desire for life. <laughs> so I mean, I'll say. So money just doesn't come. All right, money. Like right. I get that question a lot. People are like, "Oh, you got so many views. You must be making lots of money." I'm like, "You can have millions and millions of views and make zero dollars, right?" What about the TikTok Creator Fund? Yeah, sure. That pays you, I think it's like two to four cents per thousand views. Depend, like depends. It's kind of unknown. But when I, I was in it for like t- two months or something, and I was making like 180 to 220 bucks in each of those months. And I was getting like regular views, a couple of viral ones, 
just kind of the same pace. And so there's that info. Do with it as you wish. But just because yeah. you get views does not mean you get money. You got to build a business around it or have a product or service that you drive them to. It's basically like a top end of a marketing funnel. And you got to drive them to something if that's your goal. Exactly. And thankfully, a lot of the people that will be watching this podcast have the business. So they have a brand, they have an offer. So they are ahead of the game in that sense. But a lot of us, myself included, are petrified of sure. creating content of not necessarily I, creating content, but yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I love asking why. I oh, typically, yes. Yeah. I feel resistance around chasing the eyeballs for the sake of eyeballs because I feel like I've built a Thank you for asking because I'm yeah trying to articulate this in my no, mind. No, it's good. It's part of yeah. it. Yeah. I feel like I'm a business person on the mm -hmm. internet. So if I were to create content around hiking or, I don't know, building a cabin or sure. all of these other things that are part of my life, I feel like it's off brand for me. Sure. So what do you recommend when somebody is setting out to create content, maybe for an existing business that is maybe restricting themselves in that way? Or what's your general advice? Yeah. So number one, the, the app uh, rewards authenticity and it absolutely demolishes inauthenticity, <laughs> ingenuineness, whatever, the, you know, uh, yeah. it, people can tell right away. So when, when, when a salesperson calls your phone at home, your cell phone, whatever, and they're just like, hey, how's it going today? This will only take a minute. Do you have a time to chat about X, Y, and Z? And you're just like, oh my gosh, like, you know, right away. And so same idea when people are consuming TikTok or Instagram reels or any short form video, any video online, typically, the moment that next video comes on their screen and it's an ad, they typically recognize it immediately right and so mm -hmm. when i say a video that's like ad like it could be literally an ad or it's a video organically posted from your account that's completely self-serving for you and your business right and so like the idea i tell people is like you have to make videos people want to watch and then figure out how you can put or if you can put your product service or business within that video you know very product placement like for marketing folks it's the, instead of the inverse which is old school media marketing commercials previews before a movie radio ads where it's like we've got the customer stuck in one spot we can force them to watch this content sure that works then when they're forced to watch it but none of these apps are anyone forced to watch even that mm -hmm. when you first open the tiktok app they you, they can force you to watch the first what is it? Two seconds of that ad. Right. Um, and you swipe away. <laughs> so like, I would say that think about what people not even think about because you don't have to think you can literally search the app and find what works. There's enough data in there to figure out within your niche. What are the true pain points people are having in your niche, your customer, your, your, your key client, what pain points, what emotional cords are being struck on the app already. And then talk about, that it can be a negative like pain point it can be a positive point it can be whatever it's an emotional that's with any videos online youtube tiktok instagram if you can strike an emotional chord of any kind we typically see and hear of the uh the angry emotional chord where it's like you have a polarizing political view on whatever and you know ah this way ah, that way and, yeah. like yeah <laughs> right the, the reason why those work so well people engage and and people watch and people comment and people share and save, but it's an emotional core. At the core of it, it's an emotional core that they've, you've struck. Same for funny, same for wholesome, same for sad, you know, same, same. Yeah. Speaking my language, I teach people about psychology driven branding and a lot of it is storytelling. And it reminded me, sorry, this is kind of a tangent, but when you're saying, ask yourself what kinds of videos that people want to watch. I see the same thing with offers like that people are creating. It's like, how do I sell a lot of this thing? It's like, well, make something that people want to buy first yeah. and then the rest of the equation gets a lot easier. So talk to me about this research process. So you've mentioned that there's trends that have structure to them that you can emulate. You mentioned that you can search on the app itself to get ideas for content. What does that look like? Quick step-by-step -step basis. Find the wheel that's already been created. Go recreate it. <laughs> that's like the short of it. So like, do you know what I'm saying? Right? Like if I'm going to be a quarterback yeah. in the NFL, I'm going to go study Tom Brady and all the other greats, right? 
<laughs> LeBron James, Michael Jordan, basketball, Tiger Woods, golf. Like, just go go find the greats within your niche. And what are they talking about? So, like, basically find your competitor, right? Find yeah. a couple of people. I would I look at competitors or people in a very closely related niche around my business that are talking about the things my business is about. And then if there are some really large creators in that sp- that space of, of competitor or nearby competitor, and you find what find the videos that they get that are just, you know, big viral videos. What are they talking? What is the true message of that video? Right? Not like are they dancing or whatever, which sometimes can be part of it. So if it's a straight just entertaining video with zero information about their business, the pain they solve or whatever, then maybe not a good example. But if you, if they have a video or 10 that are on brand and on point with their business that do really well and really well is very relative, you know, 5,000 views can be like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And some people are like, no, I need a million. And it's like, okay. <laughs> Either way, find what's working for them. What are they talking about? Potentially, how are they talking about it? And then go talk about that same thing, right? I the love data, that. The data, the data's there. Like, why, why, why try to brainstorm? Brainstorm a little bit, but like, I would say go search first, then brainstorm after. <laughs> like, hey, we yeah. just saw 16 viral videos on four different accounts, all on the topic of student athletes having FOMO when they get injured and can't play on the field. And you're a student Mm -hmm. athlete advisor for colleges. Like, I think you found your big pain point (laughs) FOMO. (laughs) So talk anything and everything about the fear of missing out of missing games because of injury or whatever, like not feeling good enough or imposter syndrome, like whatever, you know, you can find the pain point really easy within the, the, the marketing copy. So I love that. I love that. And of course, you're going to apply your own personality and your own flavor to things. Like we can't Mm -hmm. not do that because of that authenticity that's so important. But what I'm hearing is like you're looking for themes, you're looking for topics, you're looking for even video structure that you Mm -hmm. can repurpose. And I feel like when we are so intent on being one of a kind and creative, sometimes that can be a block or like that perfectionism that stops us from doing anything. So why not emulate? Not emulate. I I need to be really careful here because I I (laughs) preach that it's really important to be yourself and to figure out those innate strengths. And I think we can follow a structure that's already been set so that we're not starting from scratch every single time that we set out to create something. So both of those things can exist. For sure. There's so, I mean, one sentence I say to people is, you know, pretend you're on FaceTime with your best friend or your family member or spouse or whoever, right? And that you just found this information out, which is the emotional cord that we're talking about on your business or in your niche, like, hey, and and talk to the camera as if you're talking to that one person about that emotional cord and what you've learned about it or a fun fact or ways to solve it. You know, having lists is a great way. Like, hey, here's two ways I figured out how to solve this thing that's a pain for this person who's like your core customer, right? (laughs) And then you Mm -hmm. just list the two things. And once you list the two things and you you end the video, you know, as reasonably quickly as possible after that to not let it drag on because watch time is is very important for the algorithm, right? Yeah. And what I'm hearing is that we don't all have to be as funny as Mike Draper, which... You got to be yourself. Like, cause if you're, yeah. I, I remember trying to be like that mortgage guy with, you know, a handful of the first mortgage videos and like, you can just see it. They're still up. You can scroll back all the way. They're all there. <laughs> I don't delete any of them. They're there. And you just see it. It's like, it's a little awkward. And like, I'm like trying to memorize like the line or the quote or whatever it is. And like, you can see it. You can feel it <laughs> that it's like, it's you, but it's not really you. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. There's but. there's a mask on. What are some of your favorite mistakes or things that you used to do wrong in the beginning that you've now oh boy learned? I've never been asked that. What are some favorite? What are some kind of interesting or funny mistakes I would make in the past? Oh, being self serving, right? And you don't think you are. It's very old school brand marketing where it's. You don't think you're doing it. You're trying to say how good of it's like, uh, well, it's like you're trying to just show how good you are, which 
you can be the best person for customers in your in your market in your business, and you can have like the best reputation for a hundred years. Your company's done X, Y, and Z, and like you really are to the core good people. But if you start saying that in videos, like, "Hey, we're the best at blah blah blah," swipe. See you later. I don't care. Being you know, I being the viewer, do not care. And so that's one mistake that like just shifts everything, right? Where it's it's like you have to make videos people want to watch, meaning you have to make videos that are inherently selfish for the viewer, where it's mm-hmm. like, oh, that video was made for me. Like that is me. And you'll see the comments on any niche where it's like, why don't you just hash why don't you just at me or tag you know tag me in the video or why don't you wow, the for you page is getting really specific today, right? <laughs> so, you know, oh hey, did you how'd you get a copy of my diary or whatever, right? So like or my notes in my phone. So that's the problem I would make before is that I would say information in a way that is like, I know this stuff. I'm good at it. I'm a good person. Look at me. Rah, rah, rah. And mm-hmm. it has to be for like 100% self-serving f- for the viewer, right? You have to be selfless, like 100% selfless. So now yes. you can talk about things that are relatable to you. And this is, this is what I do a lot is that I'll say things, experiences or instances that have happened to me in the past, like in the dating realm. So like say ghosting, for example, right? You know, you yeah. start talking to someone you're dating and then all of a sudden they just up and leave without any explanation. And so it's, they just ghost, poof. Um, that's like a punchline to a lot of my videos. But it's so, it touches a core with everyone so much because the people do it to each other so frequently that if I talk about myself getting ghosted and almost like make fun of myself, like, ah, oh, I'm so sad, look at me, like, but in a funnier way, people relate to it because they see themselves in that character, right? Mm-hmm. So same idea for the business. Um, what emotional cord are you solving or emulating or helping or whatever? And how can you talk about it in a way that the viewer sees themselves in that character, you know? Mm. I feel like that's an interesting point. Do you, when you're creating TikTok content, do you see yourself as a character, like more as like an acting role to connect with people? So I, what the way I do it is I think of real scenarios that I've, a lot of it is real, right? Mm-hmm. Where, yes, these things have happened. Because I don't lie, I never lie in my videos, but do I get ghosted 14 times a week? No. <laughs> <laughs> Have I been ghosted? Yes, sure. So that part's not real in the sense of how frequently. It's not a it's not a chronological diary of my life, right? That part is yeah. accurate. It's not, you know, it's not that. It's not a Instagram live story all the time. It's videos and they're fun and sometimes it's the trend that comes up or the sound that comes up and I just hear and see a certain structure to the video or to the sound that makes sense for this joke or whatever. But as far as getting in character, no, those things all happen to me, right? Everything in there has happened. Maybe not as frequently as I post. I don't try yeah. to portray that I get ghosted all the time. I, although people re- people will read it however they want to read it, right? They'll perceive. Right. But as far as character goes, I get into character, right? So I think about the video. Person A is talking to person B, let's say in this video, and someone, you know, person A says positive comment, person B says positive comment, and then person A says negative comment, right? And person B is is sad or they're upset or they're confused, right? Emotions. And so then I just, I just try to think of the, um, if I were to actually be saying this sentence, how would my face look? How would I actually say it? And so I think about that, like, okay, I'm upset. I'm mad at someone. Okay. What do you want? Right? Like you're just like disgust, Right. So that part, yes, I do put on a character like acting yeah. per yeah. per scene. So we're going to get right back to the interview for the next few seconds. I'm going to share with you my brand Clarity Collective and how it can help you grow your income and impact. If you're an entrepreneur who feels stuck or uncertain about what makes your brand stand out, then this is for you. The Brand Clarity Collective is a mastermind multiplied by mentorship. It's part online curriculum, part digital mastermind, and it's designed to help you get crystal clear brand clarity so you attract more perfect clients and grow your business. 
We have a thriving community of entrepreneurs who are all smart and driven. As a member of the collective, you get an all access pass to all of my best branding courses, as well as access to our private community where you can connect with like-minded entrepreneurs and get feedback and support directly from me on our coaching calls. The Brand Clarity Collective is priced at just $2.97 per month, and after six months, you keep lifetime access to all of the courses. To learn more and to see if it's right for you, head over to my homepage at kputnam.com. There's a big section where you can click to learn more. I'll also include the link in the show notes wherever you are listening or watching. All right, let's get back. Oh, thank you for that. I think that that's a really interesting distinction because it's not that you're trying to be somebody else, but you're no. using all of the tools in your toolbox to create this emotional resonance between you and the person that's watching. It's you being authentic to the emotion of the story so that people can actually connect with it. And you're doing that to connect with the person that's watching. So I think that that's a really great frame to look at content creation. Because again, it's not about you. It's about the person that's watching and you want them 100%. to have that, whatever that is. Yeah. Okay. So what makes a video go viral on TikTok? I know that we mentioned a few things, but if you were to sum it up. If I were to sum it, what makes a video go viral? It's got to be a broad enough topic that touches an emotional cord and is structured in a way that is easily consumable, right? I know it's a weird way of saying it. <laughs> if you want like the nitty gritty of what makes a video go viral. So like when I train people on in companies on how to go viral on TikTok and how to structure their videos, they, a lot of them ask me the question, you know, hey, TikTok allows you to make a 10 minute video. Should I be making 10 minute videos? And I was like, well, what is your goal? Like, what is the, the number one is always the question I ask is like, what is your target? What are you trying to accomplish here? Because that changes the strategy. And so some will say, well, is it harder for a 10 minute video to go viral than a seven second video? And I say, yes, absolutely. If you can maintain the person's attention or, you know, keep it and you're a really good storyteller and you have a really good beginning part of the video and that keeps them to the end and you keep them entertained, then yeah, sure. I, I, I equate it to like, I always do baseball analogies. And so if your 10 minute video, if you post 10 minute video, it's as if you had like a, a stick, a skinny tree branch stick, and you're trying to hit a marble that someone's throwing to you at, you know, 80 miles an hour. Can you hit that marble? Absolutely. It's physically possible. You can hit that marble. It's pretty hard, but you can do it. Now, if you have a a seven second or a five second or a six second video or a nine or a 12 second, whatever. It's more like a softball or a beach ball or a volleyball being tossed to you essentially. And you're holding a baseball bat, which one's yeah. easier. Yep. Yeah, the, obviously the latter. So shorter is typically better. It's more about the story, but as far as, far as structure goes, shorter is typically better. You have to, you have to give them a reason to stay to the end, right? That's like number mm. one. So you got to hook them in. You might hear that all the time because it's true. <laughs> so, so. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. It's true. <laughs> cliches and stats are a reason for a reason. Like, so you got to get them to, so you're, you're a video number 176. They're swiping on the couch for 21 minutes, blah, 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 blah. Why should they stop on your video, right? They come across your face or your thing on their screen. Why should they stop? Give them a reason to stop, right? That's number one. You mm -hmm. got to get them to stop scrolling. Number two, who is the video for? What is it about, right? So that first sentence, which is like the hook. Here are three ways you can do X, Y, and Z if you're a blah, blah, blah. Oh, that's speaking to me. I'm really curious what these three things are. I'm going to stay to the end to hear number three, right? Number mm -hmm. one, X, Y, Z. Number two, X, Y, Z. And if you really enjoy this content, like and follow my page for more scientific content. And number three is blah, 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 and the video, right? Mm -hmm. That would be a great structure to a video. Tell them who it's for, what it's about, and what they're going to get. And then once you give them what you told them they were going to get in the hook, Get out of there. Right? <laughs> yeah. Thanks so much for watching my channel. I hope you love this. Right. Why Please subscribe? <laughs> once, once you give them the value, they're they're gone. They're Audi 5000, yep. right? So 
I love the specificity. Thank you so much for sharing yeah. that structure with, <laughs> yeah. with us. And I love that that can be applied to virtually any niche, any industry, any offer that that somebody has. And I love the simplicity. I lean on like the list of three really often when I'm creating short videos because it creates such a natural curiosity for whatever that third thing is. So yeah, I love that. What's your process for making sure that videos are as short as humanly possible? You got to land that plane really fast, right? So the plane is the message, right? You got to get that message across. What are some tips I have for making this as short as possible? Is that right? Rewatch your video. So mm -hmm. what message are you trying to give? Rewatch the video. Are you repeating yourself? Are you, Ooh, def yeah. are, you, are you defending a position? Are you trying to justify your position? Time and place. Give them the info, mm -hmm. get out. So if you think, because like, if you think about a YouTube video, how to fix your toilet, that's leaky, let's say, is the YouTube video. And it's a nine minute video. Hi, I'm Bob with Bob's Plumbing. Today we're going to talk about your leaky toilet in your bathroom and how to fix it in a five step easy, like blah, blah, blah. Like, cool. I'm going to fast forward to four <laughs> minutes and 16 seconds to where the part that I need to learn is at. Mm -hmm. I'm going to watch that 26 seconds or that 19 seconds of information. That is what I need. I'm out of there. I'm not going to watch the rest of the three minute extra video there. So that is a TikTok, right? Yeah. It is that 16 seconds that you just snatched out of that YouTube video on TikTok. That is a TikTok. So that is landing the plane very fast. Now you might not, ha you do not have the time to set up context always the way that YouTube videos typically have in the past. Um, but you can, <laughs> you can set up context. You get really good at writing copy on like, mm. what information do they need to know to understand the context of what I'm trying to explain, teach, share, or laugh about, right? You, you land that plane, you, un you know, if you, if in school, if you only had a one page paper to write on a topic that you're thinking, ah, oh, it's minimum 10 pages. Well, you got one. How do I get all this information? I'm so smart. How do I get all this information out there? Like, figure it out, right? <laughs> if you want it to work, one page, you have this 10 second video. How would I talk about this huge brand topic, like grand topic? Like, you just give yourself that confine. So, that's one part I do mm -hmm. like about businesses on TikTok is that you don't have this vast uh, creative space to work. You do have a vast creative space to work with, but you're given the constraint of, or you're not given. I would recommend the constraint of keeping it on brand on your business on point because for many reasons, right? If you're a brand and you're selling beach balls, you're a beach ball company and you want to sell beach balls. That's all you want to do. And then you start making all beach ball videos. Great. Awesome. And then you decide to make a video about your cat in your house because your cat did something really funny whatever. And then you post a video on the cat and there's zero relation to beach ball business. And that video goes viral, right? <laughs> you get 10 and you get a hundred thousand followers, let's say from this one big video. What does that do for your company? Right. It does. Yeah. It actually hurts your company because now you have a hundred thousand followers that are following you for cat content. And then you start <laughs> pumping out your core beach ball volleyball business content they're going to swipe away. They're not going to unfollow. That's the nature of TikTok. They're not going to unfollow. Mm. They're just going to, they're just going to not engage with your content, which puts you at a disadvantage right away. <laughs> so, right. So yeah. stay on it's brand, stay on point. <laughs> negatively yeah. affecting your watch time there, which you mentioned earlier is super important. Yes. So what I'm hearing is, especially for businesses and brands, it may be okay to focus on growing more slowly and more intentionally while staying on brand, but also give yourself that creative constraint of like, how can I get my message across in 10 seconds in a really engaging way or emotional way and figuring out how to play in that playground. Reevaluate that message too. Cause I hear companies when I talk and work with them, they say that same thing you just said, where it's like, how do I get my message across? Mm, and my question yeah. is, does that message need to get across? Right. <laughs> question yeah. yourself, question your, well, that's our mission vision values of our company cool, bro. So do they care? <laughs> right? Like they, maybe, maybe that is the right answer. I don't know, but you have to ask yourself as a company, is this the right message to give across? Right? What is mm -hmm. the goal of TikTok? Are you going to get people to convert and buy immediately? 
depends on your product. Consumer price goods, yes, I would lean into that's a fast purchase. Have the least amount of clicks possible to get to your checkout page. Drive them to one spot, not a multiple, right? There's different strategies there. But like, yeah, so, you know, is that mis- is that message you think you want to give across? Is that is that the right one? Ask yourself that as a company. Mm-hmm. The metaphor that keeps coming up in my mind, which is super obvious, but it's almost like if you were producing a movie just right. for the sake of connecting with people and having them watch, what would you make? It probably isn't. Hey, I'm ABC brand. I specialize in X, Y, and Z. Like people right. again, don't care yet. They yeah, and you care. can you can and so there's ways you can like you can honor the app or respect the app and its culture, right? Mm. So and by respecting the app and respecting the culture that is on TikTok, that is TikTok, you can get views that way. So there was that U.S. congressman that was running for Florida, Ken. I don't know if you saw his TikTok channels. No, I, I didn't. It's like Ken for Florida or something was his account. He's still going, I believe. His 19-year-old son helped him run the account. And he's running for U.S. Congress. He got like 420,000 followers in like three months or something or four wow. months. It was something. It was, it was very, very, very fast. And all of his TikToks were on brand as far as like about the campaign, about him, about his his strategy for if he was elected into office and like his points of view on certain topics. And so it was very on brand. And there was a few that were uh, not exactly, they don't exactly talk about like, here's what I would do if I was elected. I would put taxes towards roads or whatever. It was more about him, but his son would help honor the app for what it is, speak to people the way they want to be spoken to on this app, right? So meet them where they're at. Don't make them get to you because they'll just mm-hmm. swipe. And so like he would do transitions, he would do trends and he would do the hard ones because his son was really good at it. He was honoring the app, <laughs> right? Not trying to be inauthentic. He was just being real and talking to people how they want to get talked to. And it mm-hmm. worked super well for him. And it was it, it worked really well because one, because there's not many or any other U.S. Congress candidates on the app that are doing it the way he's doing it. So I, when I work... Um, with this company and most of their salespeople are older, quite a bit older. And so they're like, well, why, why would I be on TikTok? I'm like, because no one else your age is on TikTok, like relatively. Yeah. Like, there's a few accounts of, you know, grandma and grandpa's on there that do it well. Your uh, uh, competition's low. <laughs> like, And there's lots of people on the app that would appreciate someone like yourself, Suzanne, of, you know, like... <laughs> that could do it well. And you don't have to do like highly edited stuff to do well. And I'll get, I give examples of exactly like how to honor the app, right? Speak to them in their language and you could blow up if you're, it's kind of like the opposite, right? Like seeing someone really polished business, like lawyer or whatever in like a, an attorney's office, like wood bookshelves and whatever. And they're just, <laughs> they're spitting out jokes. Like it's, it's like the opposite. It's kind of funny, right? Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. there's definitely humor in the tension there. Yeah. I love that. So I understand you have a course that teaches people more about TikTok. Can you tell us a little bit about it before I ask my last two questions? Yeah, absolutely. So MikeRDraper.com is my, my website and we're refilming all the content. But yeah, it's a, there's a couple different options. There's there's going to be a, a monthly option where it's, it's called the Social Accelerator. And so what it is, is you get all these on-demand courses and trainings. So on-demand trainings is the better word. On-demand trainings on how to, how to use the app, strategies on how to grow your account. And there's a monthly training where I'll, I'll be on there live answering Q&A, giving out like a, a training piece of like how to do a certain trend or kind of frequently asked questions training. And then I'll take a QA. and a That's once a month. And then I give out trend video, trend videos, trend sounds weekly. Basically, it's kind of hold people accountable for the journey that they want to go on to help grow their business. So that's like a monthly subscription part. Then there's like the actual full course, which is everything I know, right? It's, it's all of it, right? All of it out, <laughs> all of it out, organized, filmed, edited, in a way that like it's a silver platter on how to like grow your account, right? No matter, no matter the niche. Um, so that is like the course. Then there's like the monthly and then there's corporate stuff as well, where I work with large corporate teams to train their whole staff to do their onboarding. My business partner, Danelle Delgado, she, uh, her part of that is she helps people become the people they need to be to do the stuff they want to do. Right. So I have, mm. the, I have, 
one part of it is social media is part of what we teach. And that's where I come in for my part. And I told them how to do it, but they need to become the person that can do it first. And that's her, yeah. right? And the teams that need to do it, right? So she trains teams to be better teams. We help people work better and get the right mindset, get the right tools in place, fix their personal stuff, fix their professional stuff to give them like the best chance at swinging the bat at business, social teams, all that stuff. But yeah, MikeRDraper.com. That's where you can find it. Love it. I think courses are such a gift because you get to just download somebody's genius that they painstakingly put together into a. It's a lot of work. Like I, I, I started. Work. It. I started it. I was like, <laughs> oh, I can do this like semi quickly. Like it's like it's like a school project in my mind. And then I start going through it, and I'm like, no, nah, I should add that because that's like. I would be upset if I didn't add this part to it or if, you know, mm-hmm. I put myself in the shoes of the customer where I'm like, yeah, I should probably add that or I should, ugh. you're like, you start really critiquing yeah. yourself really hard because you want, I mean, I, me at least, I want to put out something really good as best I yeah. can and have it work. Right. I can't, yeah. I love the, I, I love when people tell me like, Hey, I did what you told me to do. Like we had one person, I, I did an in live training in like a month ago and someone's like, I did exactly what you said immediately after the class between class and dinner. And they were walking back to their room and uh, like, I got, you know, 18 hours, I got a hundred thousand views doing, <laughs> doing exactly what you said. And I was like, ah, shocker. It actually works guys. Like <laughs> go look, go look at Ashley. Like, and then someone else was like, Oh, I got six times my average views. Right. Mm-hmm. So someone would, was averaging 300 views a video, never got any thing above that, like three or 400. And then she got like 1800, yeah. 2200, 1600. Right. It's just like, Oh, I'm averaging higher. And I'm like, hell yeah. That's, that's the point. Right. It's all that's relative. It. So I love it. The humans that watch this podcast and hang out with me love to learn. So I love to ask my guests, when you are tackling a new subject or a new thing, what is your preferred way to learn something new? What's your strategy? My preferred way of learning something new. This has been my entire life. So I find yeah. the great I find the greats of who's who's done it first, right? Most everything, unless you're Elon Musk or Mark Zuckerberg or Bezos, typically, has been done before by somebody else, right? So find I find someone who is just currently crushing it in the area that I want because recent information is better than old information I say but and so I try to find someone who's who's currently just doing what I want to do right whether they're 10 steps ahead or two steps ahead they're down this lane right I'm pointing in a direction if you're only hearing this I'm pointing in a direction if they're down this lane that <laughs> I want to go down I clear my plate my my metaphorical plate of obligations stresses tasks in a day, right? As best I can. Yeah. And then I focus on one thing. I get like hyper-focused and just sprint, right? In that direction until I realize I don't like that direction anymore, or I want to explore more down that direction or whatever. You don't know until you actually go down that path. So I find the greats who have done it. I prepare myself very quickly to sprint, right? It does not need to be a painstaking task of like, I'll start January 1st or I'll start in two months when I have this one work product. Like there's never a perfect time to start anything, right? You just make it work if it's a priority. So I make it a priority very quickly. And then I just go, right? Sacrifice some things, right? They don't need to be huge sacrifices, but like, you know, the whole delayed gratification thing is usually you sacrificing something. So if the pain of wanting this new thing is greater than the pain of what it takes to get there, you're going to do it. So until that reward or that goal is so great for you that it's it's worth the pain it takes to get there, you'll do it. If it's not there and the pain is is more than the reward, you're just not going to do it. That's with anything in life. So and I go freaking try to emulate it. I love it. So many nuggets in what you just shared. And if you could like plant a seed of an idea or like airdrop a piece of knowledge to everybody that is watching or listening to this episode, what would you want everybody to know? Why would you not start, right? Why would you not do it? I was a, you know, in the military, I was a police officer, you know, all the cliches of police work, right? I've, I have been through a lot of stuff with that, right? That every, every police officer has almost. Yeah. And, you know, been involved in shootings, been involved in domestic stuff, been involved in all these things. And so like, if you've ever had someone close to you, you know, die, then you know as well. If you've ever personally been sick with cancer or some kind of disease or a near-death experience, 
you know, you know how short and fragile life is. I think most adults have an idea. I just never forget that, right? So for me, I know it sounds cryptic and all those things, but why would you not do the thing you think you want to do, right? We all are going to die. Now, I know it's a cliche you might hear. We're all going to die one day, but really set that, let that set in. When it's, it's what I do, right? Like, what am I grateful for each day? I wake up. What, like, what? Number one, I'm awake, <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. Number one, I feel pretty good. Like, I'm a little sore from my workout, let's say, but like, I feel pretty good, right? I'm, you know, I'm healthy. I drink my water. I got my sleep in. I, whatever, ate my vegetables, <laughs> you know. Uh, but why would you not do it? You know, you're going to regret it not trying. Failing is so easy and it should be comfortable, right? So like there's this thing I'll do in trainings, right? If you're watching the video version of this, what I'm doing is I have my two fists in front of me, okay? Uh, this was, who was this? This was uh, Rick or, oh my God, I can't think. V Voss, the v FBI negotiator. Yeah. I can't yeah. think of his first name right now. Rick Voss? Oh, I don't know. Voss. I don't know. <laughs> and so he puts his fist in front of him, right? And he says, put your left hand pointer finger out. Now put your right hand thumb up, right? Now switch them, okay? So put the other thumb up. Now go back and forth. Now slowly pick up speed as fast as you can, right? It's awkward, yes. right? <laughs> it's awkward. And that is that is the actual like real life example of you learning something, right? It's going to be awkward. You're not going to succeed the first time and you're going to have to figure it out and really focus and think. And that is so applicable to business, to TikTok, to fitness, to whatever it is you want to do. Freaking do it. Get off your butt. Like inaction is shitty. Like go do something, right? Boom. Mic drop. Mic <laughs> drop. So MikeRDraper.com. Remind me what your TikTok handle is, Mike. It's the same. So I changed. Yeah. So Mike R. Draper is for TikTok and same thing for Instagram, Mike R. Draper. And then website, yep, MikeRDraper.com. And you're podcasting now too as well. Is that right? I am. I'm, yeah. My sign's right here. I didn't put it up. I, I was somewhere else filming and then I didn't put it up. But it's, yeah. What's next with Mike Draper? Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing your genius with yeah. us today. This was incredible. I honestly could have asked you 17,000 more questions. <laughs> so <laughs> I just very much appreciate you. No, it's really fun. I appreciate you having me on here, honestly. Even if you're not on TikTok, I know that you can apply what you learned from my conversation with Mike to YouTube, to Instagram, to wherever your brand is showing up, even if that's good old fashioned in-person marketing and networking. I love learning from Mike. I could have asked him 17,000 more questions and I hope you enjoyed the conversation and the education as much as I did. All of the links and resources that we mentioned are over on my website. So if you go to kpatnum.com slash podcast, you get all of the show notes and all of the previous episodes on everything branding, psychology, entrepreneurship, and the topics that we cover. Thank you so much for listening. If you haven't yet, I would so appreciate if you went to the podcast app that you're listening on and either subscribe or leave us a five-star review if you haven't yet and you're enjoying the show. It helps so much and helps more smart entrepreneurs like you find this content. I appreciate you and I hope you're doing amazing. Keep getting your beautiful brain out into the world. Don't take yourself too seriously and remember to connect emotionally like Mike taught us. And I can't wait to see how this strategy influences yours.